Big E. Yes. New gym, new pro. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today? So, first of all, welcome guys to the initial Merlin's Mind Over Muscle. <laughs> that's the name of the show. You and your names. <laughs> yes, I love, I love having my special name. So that's the first show we got. My good friend, IFBB Classic Pro, Bo Santos with us. Hey, Bo. What's up, guys? And uh, I've worked with Bo a couple times. Good thing about him is he loves torture. He loves mm -hmm. torture, so he's fun to work with. So today here at Powerhouse Gym, one of the best gyms in Las Vegas. If you visit Vegas, you gotta come here. Uh, Iris and he Day will be your host. Uh, we're gonna do some quads and we're gonna do some biceps. And I'm gonna be using two different training styles. The first one is my ESPX2 style, which we're gonna use for quads, and then the FTX2 style, which we're gonna use for biceps, but I'll explain what those things mean as we move along during the workout. All right, so we're just gonna film the whole workout today. Uh, we don't know if we'll do it in one or two videos. We may actually split it. We'll see how it goes, see how, how it goes. And then, uh, good to have you with us, well, man. Love to be here, man. Oh, I was great. He's the first. He's the first <laughs> one on full time bodybuilding TV. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> honor. an honor. Very honor. Very, very, very <laughs> All right. Awesome. I'm sure we'll have him some more in the future. Yeah, love it. All right. Good to have you here. Look who we have here greeting us in his gym to train. Oh, oh well, star, hey, superstar. Hey, hey. So what's going on? I haven't seen you a while. I know. <laughs> I came back. Man. And you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, you guys always wel welcome and thank you for coming. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. You going to the Arnold? Yes, I'm going to Arnold. You know, right. like, you know. You I, want to catch up each day at the Arnold class. Yes, yes, please, please. Yeah. Where will I, you be? I'll be at uh, everywhere. <laughs> I'll be at the everywhere. All right. Yeah. All right. See you guys there. All right. Hi, Biggie. What's the first one? So for the first exercise today, we're doing leg extensions, and what we're going to be doing is holding the contracted position for about five seconds on every rep. An extremely intense technique to start the workout with. Here we go. All right. Now, Bo's not going to only be squeezing at the top, just holding it there. He's going to be mentally squeezing the muscle as hard as he can. I call this hyper-contracting. Good. This program that we're using today, ESPX2, it's all about creating maximum tension in the muscles. It's not about weight, it's about creating tension. And that's why we're emphasizing the contraction and holding it in place and squeezing to create that tension in his quads. As you can see, he's flexing real hard. Let's go, Bo. Championship legs. Bo's in off season right now and he's still in amazing shape. Yeah. Striations in his quads in the off season. That's how disciplined and dedicated he is to his diet. Come on, squeeze, tight. I call this mind over muscle because you're gonna put your mind into the quads, make them contract harder, see what you want them to look like. Bring it up, squeeze. He's shaking, here we go, a couple more, come on. Up, squeeze, hold. Good, one more, come on. Up, squeeze. Good, nice. Good job, Bo. All right, Biggie. So for the second exercise, as I told you in the beginning, this is called ESPX2. So the E stands for eccentric. Uh, the, the S is for squeeze, which is what we did on the first, mo first movement. We were emphasizing the squeeze. The P is for positive, so we're emphasizing the positive. So I'm doing them a little bit out of order, but we're doing the leg press. We're gonna do four second positives out of the bottom. If you have never tried this before, this is one of the most difficult techniques you could possibly use, especially on a leg movement, but Bo is about to crush it here on this leg press. All right, buddy, here we go. Lay it all on the table now. So when you guys watch him do this, you're gonna see he's gonna come to the bottom under control. He's gonna stop at the bottom before he pushes up. He buries it, holds it, and then starts four seconds on the way up. The key 
is to not push quickly out of the bottom. It's going to be a full four seconds slow. One, two, three, four. Very, very difficult to have the discipline to do this. You see that? See when he comes out of the bottom, he's not shift pushing right out. He's going slow all the way from being buried in the hole. This will make, he's got five plates on the machine. This will feel more like eight plates. Come on. This creates an incredible amount of tension on the muscle going this slow. Come on. Come on, come on. Another one, another one, come on. You're a pro now, let's go. Bury it. Slow, slow with me. I'm gonna do one more, one more, one more, one more, come on. Show them how to grow. Slow, 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 and to the top, good. You tricked him. You said one more before that. <laughs> Hi, Biggie. All right, so for the next exercise, we're gonna emphasize the eccentric, or the negative portion of the rep. So we're gonna use this squat machine here, and we're gonna be doing a four second lowering phase. But what I also have Bo doing is when he hits the bottom, he's not coming right out. He's actually gonna settle into the bottom, hold that bottom position for one second, and then he's gonna slowly muscle out. I don't want him to just push up too quickly. I don't want him to use complete muscular tension throughout the entire set. Again, another very difficult technique, but amazing for muscle growth. In fact, the eccentric training, as you mentioned, is one of the most effective anabolic igniters for muscle growth. It is actually more important to the concentric, which a lot of people don't realize. So watch how he slowly goes down, all the way through the range of motion, taking four seconds, settling at the bottom, and muscling to the top. And you can see that's a true four seconds. It's not a quick one, two, three, four. Also notice that he's doing it evenly throughout the entire rep. So he's starting from the top and coming slow right from the beginning of the rep, not dropping halfway and then going slow, slow throughout the entire range. He's getting down to the bottom position, holding for a second, and pushing to the top. Awesome, Bob. Good. These guys in Classic today have amazing quads. So Bo wants to bring his up and have a lot of thickness and sweep on the outside, especially to make his waist look small. There you go. Push. One of the hardest workers I've ever seen. This guy right here. Come on. That's it. True four seconds. Settle. Muscle out. Good. Now the set's begun. Come on. These are the growth reps. It takes a lot of discipline to still move it over four seconds. A lot of discipline, it's a long set. Push, two more, come on. Same pace, same pace, come on. Settle, push, another one. Come on, come on. This is when you grow. Up, finish, finish, finish. Nice. Excellent. Bye, Biggie. All right, forgive me because I just did my set. I'm yeah. exhausted. However, what we're doing here with the last exercise for legs is we are now doing a very, very high rep set. We want the reps to be at least 25 or so. The idea here is to force as much blood in the muscle as possible because after we did the first three exercises, which caused a lot of trauma to the muscle fibers, we now want to force the blood in, the nutrients, the oxygen, uh, so that we can facilitate the recovery process right away. Plus also getting the cells completely filled with fluid is also another signal for growth. When you overfill a cell, it tells the body the cells gotta get bigger, they gotta grow. So, but I did 30 reps on my set. I'm challenging Bo to do 50 on his set because he has to go this year and win 
every one of his classes. Plus, you already did 50 to the set before, so now he has no choice. <laughs> Plus, he got 50 on the first one, so I'm making him do it again. So he's a beast, so let's do it. So you see, we're kind of going to use these like a piston up and down, but still under control. He's going to see he's still controlling it. He's never locking out completely. This is constant tension, forcing as much blood into the muscle as possible. Uh, okay, so let's move it back a little bit. One set, one, just back one? Okay. This is very, very difficult. We have already been through hell on this workout, to tell you the truth. This is a very difficult way to finish, but this is the idea between EXPX2 training. This is the way we do it. And he's off. And there's 10. And as you can see, he's not doing half reps. He's still, he's still going deep in the hole. You counting, Dave? 20. Thirty. 30. Now he's getting nasty. Come on. Making it look easy. Forty, come on. Come on. Up. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Fifty. He's gonna go past oh, it. I knew he would. Two. 53, two more, 54, last one, up. I think that was 56. I know, you need four more. <laughs> I, we'll give him a pass on that. 56 is pretty incredible. That's crazy. He's a beast. All right, Biggie. Okay, so we're doing biceps now. We're using my FTX2 program. And the whole point of this program actually is to start off with a movement for very high reps, unlike the last thing we did, which was high reps in the last movement. And the point of this is basically we wanna fatigue the slow twitch muscle fibers as much as possible to start the workout off and kind of knock those fibers off to a degree so that the fast twitch muscle fibers will come into action a lot quicker uh, in the later movements. So that's why we're gonna start with very high reps, hit those slow switch fibers, we're gonna do it on this curling machine here, and again, we're looking for 20 plus. Here, here we go. So he's gonna use a good pace, not too fast, not too slow. Everything's still under control, but he's not gonna be holding or squeezing at any particular point in the motion. It's just gonna be down and up. And again, like I said, these high reps are gonna fatigue the slow twitch muscle fibers. So we're gonna fatigue them early. So the following movements are going to work the fast switch muscle fibers a lot more quickly and a lot harder. Come on, Bo. All right, here we go. Up. 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 Three to go. Here we go. One. Up. Big burn. Up. Two. Last one. Up. Squeeze. Boom. Nice. Way to go. What's next, Biggie? Okay, so for the next movement, we're gonna be doing this uh, incline low cable curl. You'll see he's gonna sit back against the bench. It's gonna be a slight angle out front. Good strict curl, but the technique is what's really important on this one. Because I'm looking to really, really get to those fast twitch muscle fibers, that first exercise we did, high reps, fatigue those slow twitch muscle fibers, kind of get them out of the way, so to speak. The second movement we're gonna do is gonna go heavy around eight reps or so, we want to stay at least under 10. And he's gonna use a four second negative because of course we want to have good time under tension, but we're gonna use a very, very explosive positive. So this is gonna be one where I'm not telling him to necessarily muscle to the top. Now this doesn't mean throw it to the top. We still want to use muscular action, biceps in this case, but we want to do a very, very, very quick rep, a very, very explosive rep because what that does is it excites the central nervous system. And when you get the central nervous system excited like that, 
uh, you will actually engage more fast twitch fibers in the following movements, which is what we're trying to do. So give this a shot. It's really, really tough. Uh, explosive movements, it's great for growth as well. Now, like most of the time, I like to use slower pace, muscling the weight to make sure not to use any joints or attachments and just use the muscle. But if you do this under control, sometimes explosive lifting can be very, very effective, like I said, for exciting the central nervous system and exciting those fast twitch muscle fibers, which of course are the ones most responsible for hypertrophy. So as you see, he's doing a four second negative. And even though the weight is not moving that quickly, in his head, he's trying to be as explosive as possible. But since it's heavy, it's kind of not gonna move that quickly. Good full range of motion. Explosive to the top. By doing a curl at this angle with his back up against the pad like this, it takes any swinging out of the movement. He can't use his lower back. And when he gets to the bottom, he sets for a second. And boom, then he starts. Go. Come on, another one. Still under control, as you can see, when, when he's fatigued. Stops for a second. Up. Finish this one. Finish this one. Boom, slow to the bottom, you're done. Lengthen, lengthen. Nice, good set. Okay. All right. Okay, so now that we have used those first two movements to really get those fast twitch fibers ready for action. Uh, we're gonna just do a couple more exercises. We wanna get in a range of about 12 to 15 reps, just using really, really good form, controlled motion, full range of motion, focusing on everything from the stretch to the squeeze, but not holding any one particular part of the movement. We're gonna be doing a really good peaking exercise right here, which is gonna be an upper cable curl on a very slight incline. He's gonna be pulling down to the head, this movement is really, really good for working the brachialis muscle that lies underneath the bicep. Uh, and when you build that muscle, it actually will help to push the bicep up and give the appearance of more peak. So this is a really, really excellent movement if you're looking to build a higher look to the biceps. Don't gotta go crazy heavy on this movement because you wanna go slow, you wanna squeeze, you don't wanna throw the weight. You want to make sure that you can control it all the way from beginning to end. And he's going to keep his elbows right here throughout the motion, except he'll bring them back just slightly at the end of the motion to help to get a slightly better contraction. And he's just squeezing back. So anytime you do curls, well, the elbows are away from the torso, in front of the torso. This will slacken the biceps a little bit and bring more brachialis into play so the brachialis will work a little bit harder. And like I said, when you build that brachialis, which is kind of like a little knotted muscle under the biceps, it'll give the appearance of better peak. You're not actually changing the shape of the biceps, which is impossible, but you are pushing them up a little bit higher by building the brachialis. Come on, squeeze, good. Squeeze it, good. Squeeze it, that's it. See how he's using perfect form. He's focusing on every portion of the movement. Squeeze it, good, we're gonna do two more. Come on. A little beyond failure, squeeze, good, one more. And squeeze, 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 squeeze. Let's do a nice slow negative to finish this one. Nice slow negative, and good. Go. Okay, so last exercise for the biceps. Now, before you guys go crazy out there and say, where's the free weights? Because I've been using machines and cables. Of course, we normally use free weights in our, in our exercises in our, during our workouts, but today I wanted to show Bo specific exercises and they happen to be on the cable because I'm looking to build certain parts of, of his physique because he's, you know, he's classic. Classic guys are extremely detailed, so I'm giving him some really good movements that are unique, hitting the muscles a little bit differently. So this is a one arm, cable curl from an overhead position. The way he's gonna position his body, he's gonna be curling almost as if he was trying to curl behind his head. What this is gonna do is this is gonna work the, this portion of the bicep right in the front. 
The movement we did before this worked the brachialis more on the outside, so now we're gonna go to the inside head of the bicep. This is a very isolated movement. The shoulder's completely taken out of it, so you have to use bicep strength to do this. So it's a really good isolation movement, especially to finish off with a workout. Okay, so as you can see, he's sitting on the bench. As you can see, he's got his torso angled away from the working arm. He's starting all the way out straight. He's keeping his elbow up. So you see his upper arm is at an angle here rather than straight. It's up at an angle. This is gonna help get a better contraction. Also, what he's focusing on doing is keeping his elbow in this position the whole time. And also, as you can see, the plane of motion where his hand is going, it's as if he's trying to curl back behind his head. This is gonna give him a better contraction and better activate this head of the bicep right here in front. As you can see, he's already got an amazing peak on his bicep. So along with all the heavier movements that he does, the compound stuff he does, movements like this are very, very important to build that detail. And as you can see, he's also focusing on the squeeze. This is a great peak contraction movement. You have a cable. So between those two things, take advantage of it and get a really good hard squeeze at the top. Squeeze. Mm. A couple more. I'm gonna keep that elbow here. We don't wanna move forward. Squeeze. Mm. Good, two more. Squeeze. Good. And last one. Squeeze, contract, 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 hold, and lower, good. Excellent set. All right. All right, well, uh, usually you talk to me, so. <laughs> you don't have a mic. Well, anyway, that was an awesome workout. I am exhausted. We did uh, quads, ESPX2 style, biceps, FTX2 style, and uh, my main question will be, Bo, Yes. How was it? Very, very, very challenging. <laughs> I would say a uh, completely new uh, approach to uh, like quad training uh, in itself that I'm not accustomed to. Uh, there are various uh, you know, tools that you showed me today, uh, like different types of tempo techniques, uh, ways of uh, manipulating the rep to make it feel 10 times heavier than it actually was, particularly on the uh, leg press with the uh, five, sec uh, five second positive was probably the biggest shocker to me, the biggest shocker to you know, how to really, really make that exercise that much harder, um, almost equivalent to you know, maybe 10, 10 more plates, or on each, uh, five on five on each, yeah. each side, right? So um, yeah, cool different feel um, and intensity, of course, reaching new heights with you every time we train, so. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, you've done my stuff before. I try to show you some new stuff. What body part so far? We've done, uh, on, on camera, we did uh, shoulders together. Uh, he and I did a back workout together, I believe. Yeah, that's right. I think yeah, we've we done did two that. back workouts. We've done two back workouts together. Uh, so this was uh, quads and buys. So we still have a couple of body parts to go. I was curious to see how you would do on legs because he's got good legs already, you know, so that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, and uh, and he's, he's, he's strong, uh, but one thing that about Bo that, you know, He's so good. First of all, he picks up the techniques very quickly because yeah, he cheat on the time. Yeah, he, he he really watches, he really listens because I know that he wants to get every single thing he can out of it. And he, he believes in it. So he's used it, so he believes in it. But also he's so hard, he's such a hard worker because quite honestly, these techniques, they the sets are very, very long. They're very, very challenging physically, but equally as challenging mentally, wouldn't you say, just to stay in it that long? Yeah, I mean, that's also like half of the battle almost, right? It's like, how far can you push past muscular failure and how much can you train the mind to break down those, you know, those barriers that you have in your mind uh, that you feel in your body and just know that you can get a little bit extra more. Of course, it's amazing to have you and Dave alongside with me so I know I can train safely with you guys. Uh, but you know, key is to be able to push limits every single time, be personal uh, best, be able to reach new levels of intensity, which I feel like is only going to translate to muscular development at some point. So, so are you going? You're doing your off season now. You yes. know, you're really heavy into your off season now. 
Uh, do you have any plans to compete or are you still kind of figure out what you want to do? Honestly, I would probably say that I want to do a hard push, continue. We just started like traditional off season, hard push until maybe July, gauge progress, see if this is where I want to be, if I'm going to be even competitive at that, uh, you know, come July. If not, uh, we do another push and uh, hopefully to, you know, be able to make some significant improvements before I get on stage. Of course, I would like to get on stage immediately and it means like some I of I think I'll make a lot of progress to June, but the question is, when you're not training with us, do you still do some of these techniques? Of course. Like, I try, because some people just go back to do whatever they were doing before, no. so it's interesting. It's honestly hard not to slow down the reps and not pick up the tempo because of how much harder it makes every exercise. And when you're by yourself, you know, like, being able to slow down the rep instead of just adding more weight is a lot safer way to challenge, your say, challenge yourself, right? So when, when I'm not training with you guys, some of the biggest uh, tips that I've taken from you is absolutely like pushing the intensity, and then of course being able to manipulate the rep speed and the tempo in order to gain uh, you know, some type of uh, progressive overload, whether it's rep, uh, re uh, rep count or uh, weight or whatever it is, right? So. Yeah, and another technique that I showed you today, which I, I brought into a lot of the exercises, is something that I call setting. Yeah. And, and you know, I wanted you to talk about it a little bit. And the reason why I want you to talk about it is because you actually mentioned to, it to me a couple of times during training when we were doing the, uh, the eccentric training on the squat machine. Yeah. And I was making you stop at the bottom and hold for a second before you even started the ascent. Yeah. And you were like, wow, that just brings it to a completely different level. So yeah. how much do you think that that really comes into play in terms of making the sets more uh, effective. It almost, to me, it almost feels like you're doing two reps within one rep. Because you you pause, there's no, you're a complete stop no of motion. Momentum. No momentum, right? So you're already fatigued from the initial movement or drop to, to the bottom of the, uh, of the rep. And then now you have to pick up all that weight again, start a new rep essentially, and be able to, a lot of your cues were very helpful to be able to uh, muscle it up, right? To only just flex the muscle to get you up out of that hole, brings like new levels of, uh, you know, d different feel to the muscle when you're when you're exercising, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, rest. yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a test. I mean, uh, and you know, you, you pass it with flying colors and not everybody does it as well as you did, but I think, I think mostly it's people who have high pain thresholds, uh, but also people who are so driven that they're willing to stay mentally in the set long enough because when you start to fatigue and you have to still use those four second negatives or five, five second positives or those five second holds, it becomes brutally difficult. That's the last thing that you want to do is, you know, work like that and I made sure you kept that same pace the whole time and you and you did it. He went so, slower. Some, sometimes you went even lo longer than you should have. Like, yeah, like, and a couple of times where I said to him two more, he would still get three or four more yeah, because he's just so jerk, which is why I love working with him and I, and I hope to work with him a lot more uh, as time goes by. But I know you're probably exhausted, hungry, ready for a nap, yeah. so I don't want to keep you any longer, but I want to say thank you for being on the initial episode of full-time bodybuilding TV. Please uh, subscribe, guys. Please subscribe, like, and subscribe to the channel. Tell friends about it, because this is going to be the ultimate online muscle magazine. Uh, and uh, this was the first show. I have changed the name of the show on this channel to Merlin's Mind Over Muscle, because I believe that it all starts in the mind. So thank you, buddy, for being on. And we will have you on many more times. And thank you guys for watching. Thanks, guys.